Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Taylor. I post all sorts of fitness, lifestyle, and law school sort of videos. So, if that's what you want to see, hit that subscribe button down below. Today's video, I'm going to go through all of the books that I have read over the past couple of months. This is starting around August. I did a video sometime around that general time period uh, with books that I read this summer. So, we're following it up with the next one. So like that video, I'm going to break this into two categories. We are going to do the fiction books and we are going to do the nonfiction. So if you are only interested in one of those things, feel free to jump straight to that category. But we are going to start off with fiction. So let's go. So book number one is Crazy Rich Asians. This one's kind of a funny story in the sense that some friends wanted to do a movie night with this book. Obviously the movie made from the book. And I am the type of person that I like being able to have uh, read the thing before I watch the thing. So I had a week to read this book. So I was like reading, like literally like had a goal for myself. I had to read like a hundred pages a night to get through it in time. That was fun, but very good book. And I enjoyed it and it was fun. Next up is Little Fires Everywhere. One of the things that I enjoyed most about this book is I just feel like there were a lot of different storylines and a lot of different ways that a lot of these seemingly different characters and events as you get to the conclusion of the book everything's connected everything is always connected and i think that's so cool and i always enjoy that and so this book did that really well in my opinion so enjoyed that the next one is the gentleman's guide to vice and virtue this one was a sort of young adult book so some slightly younger fiction but i like ya i like that as a genre i think there's a lot of good books in that and it doesn't necessarily have to be you know relegated to just only teenagers read this but basically this was kind of victorian era uh characters and it's a series so there's a sequel that comes afterwards but basically <laughs> this little troublemaking uh kid goes out on his tour basically around europe uh, with his best friend who he's secretly in love with and that of course creates drama and so there's all sorts of chaos they get up to a bunch of wild shenanigans end up on a pirate ship all this good stuff it's good it's good little fantasy i love fiction that very much like takes me out of my own world and takes me out of my own head and so we liked this next up is sweet cute which is an adorable adorable book uh once again kind of ya genre uh these two characters who know each other from school and then also run social media accounts for their parents businesses and get into a twitter war hence the you know twitter cute name and so they start a little romance themselves and it gets all sorts of messy because of all of these different ways that their lives intertwine that they didn't know about and cute and it's just a little it's a nice little feel-good read the fifth book is red white and royal blue and i have talked in more than one video about how much i love this book this book is just everything i could ever want in a single novel it's got like u.s politics stuff it's got a uh, 2020 world in which 2016 was not the uh interesting outcome that we got uh went a lot better but love story between son of the president and a british prince which is just it's so great it's like the whole classic i hate you and then i uh, know apparently i just i'm in love with you didn't realize that one whoops that's awkward love that trope and the main character is just such a relatable person i just ah uh, he is I just I just relate very hard to all of the ways that he thinks and operates next up we're going into sort of sci-fi dystopian fiction with Red Rising by Pierce Brown this is also part of a series and I also have plans to read the future books but basically this is story very Hunger Games esque but like grown up Hunger Games so the main character is part of what is essentially their slave class in this new world and goes through all these transformations to be disguised as one of the top 
uh, the top classes of people and kind of infiltrate that and hopefully break down the system. But this first one is basically just him at the training academy that they have for that upper class group of people and the ways that he navigates that and it is uh, very <laughs> violent so if that's not your cup of tea maybe not maybe not the book for you if you're not into a little bit of gore uh, and a little bit of biting and gruesome gruesome stuff but if you're okay with that in your fiction it's a really good read and it's really well written next up is normal people by Sally Rooney this is one that I've seen people talk about a lot I also had to wait forever for it on my library card so presumably that's when, you, that's when you know things are popular is when you have to wait like almost six months to get a book the one thing I will say that stands out to me the most in my head about this book there's no quotation marks like <laughs> dialogue doesn't have quotation marks around it which is so weird and I don't know how it works like somehow I was able to read it and not really struggle with that but it's the strangest concept to me that you could you would write a whole book without quotation marks but it's kind of one of those everyday life type books where you really follow these two characters through high school and college and the ways that they grow and change and just develop as people and kind of keep finding their ways back to each other again and again. Next up is a book that I read in one day and uh, probably shouldn't have been reading it in one day because I had finals to study for but I started reading it and literally could not stop and it is The Hating Game by Sally Thorne which once again we have discussed previously that I love books where it's like I don't like you and then turns out nope just kidding apparently I'm in love with you. Very similar thing there's an office rivalry going on here between these two characters and then all of a sudden there's a romance. Next up, I Hate Everyone But You by Gabby Dunn. This is a story told entirely through emails and text messages, and I love a good story communicated in some sort of weird format, including this. I love the way that you can tell a story through like text messages, and you get the full story, but you don't get the full story, and it requires you to like kind of fill in the gaps and kind of imagine these scenes as they might exist outside of just the text messages communicated between two people but it's two friends who go off to college in totally different places and are in totally different uh, situations and are bouncing back and forth with each other. It's great. And the final one which is a book that also went through this one very quickly was One of Us is Lying. It's kind of Breakfast Club-esque uh, in the beginning where you have these five totally different people who go into detention together except instead of you know just going into detention together and the plot of The Breakfast Club ensuing one of them dies and the other four are automatically suspects and there's all sorts of crazy drama that comes out of it trying to figure out what really happened and how that whole mystery sorts out and so it's one of those like page turners where you're just constantly like I need to know more I need to get the rest of this because it's very strategically you get a little bit more and a little bit more information as you go like farther and farther into the book it's good it's a good one and on the other side of the coin, we have nonfiction. I am the type of person who I like to balance relatively equal amounts of fiction and nonfiction, but I also tend to like kind of focus on certain topics and a lot of my book choices go around that. I think that was another thing that was probably visible in my summer choices. I did a lot of reading around uh, race issues and that's kind of very much continued in the list for this fall. The first one is On the Other Side of Freedom. This is a book by DeRay McKesson. Uh, he is one of the hosts of Pod Save the People, which is a podcast that I follow and listen to a good bit. And so have been meaning to read this book by him for a long time because I really, really like him as a podcaster. And so I was very excited to see him in writing form. And I think he's just as great and inspirational of a writer as he is a podcaster so that one was also really really solid next up is racecraft by karen fields this one was a bit more academic and definitely a very very solid read but a little bit dense and then the next one is killing the black body by dorothy roberts this is a book that's been out for a while but had just recently been recommended to me and i read it and i 
definitely was an eye-opening read um i am very passionate about reproductive rights that's something that's kind of one of been one of the things that i've been super interested in for a very long time and have kind of gotten involved in and there is so much more to issues of reproductive justice than just uh what kind of gets the most screen time and what's the most uh popular aspects to discuss and i think this book does a really really good job of diving into them some of these things i was already kind of aware of existed and other ones it was my first time learning about them and so for me as someone who is interested in that type of stuff and potentially wants to you know do that in a career setting i think having a more holistic understanding of everything and not just the issues that get brought up the most really 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 good next up is the color of law by richard rothstein this one was also one that had a really funny timing aspect to it because i read this book which is very focused on how the u.s government and people within the government acted in ways that reinforced and created uh, segregation in cities and suburbs and communities i ended up reading this around the same time that we started discussing a lot of these issues related to zoning and covenants and all of that good stuff in my property law class so it was kind of funny to have that uh have my what i thought was fun reading <laughs> tied directly into what i was learning in class i'm pretty sure at one point my textbook specifically mentions the color of law so i accidentally got a little too close to academic coursework but it's a really really good book and once again something that i didn't know a lot about and have a much better understanding of now next up is why i'm no longer talking to white people about race which is another really really solid book uh if you want to read books about racism by black authors i think this is another really great one that goes into issues the author is based in the uk so it's also kind of a different perspective from that aspect obviously i'm not british but as someone who has had interest in british politics and all of that stuff it was a great like bonus perspective from a different country and obviously these issues aren't exclusive to america and so getting an international perspective good stuff next up how to be an anti-racist which i feel like is if i had to like identify a book of the summer that i heard talked about the most this one would be it i think it deserves that as far as like if you really want to get an introduction to the issues and get the perspective of a person of color rather than reading a book by a white person about race which there are so many incredible authors of color so go for one of these but i think it's a very very good book as far as establishing a starting point for exactly what it says how to be an anti-racist and how to understand how racism is in everything you can't just pretend it doesn't exist anymore when it's very much alive and it's a matter of an entire system of reinforcing ideals next up is emergent strategy this is a book this is an interesting book i wouldn't say it was one of my favorites the author's writing style is very unique i think she is very kind of scattered and i don't mean that in a negative way but it's just kind of the way that she thinks is in a lot of different ways all at once and building all of these big webs and looking at how nature you know can be a model for how humans think about social justice and change and building organizations and it's interesting but you know it's kind of the type of thing where like there's a lot of little pieces and I feel like this would be a good book to like reference, like open up to a page and like read a little bit and like come back to and read a little bit. And I think she says that in the introduction too, like it doesn't have to be a book that you read straight through. And I feel like that would give it more value as more of like a reference resource than the type of book that you read straight through. Next up is The Warmth of Other Suns. This is a book about the Great Migration. So it is basically a un planned uncoordinated mass movement uh of african americans from the south to the north and uses three different people stories to kind of illustrate this and so it's really nice because it doesn't necessarily feel 
quite as much like nonfiction as you're having facts spit out at you because there does feel like this narrative undertone to it. I also have the fun, fond memory of starting this book while waiting in line to vote. And so like literally having my fingers freezing off as I was trying to like read it on my phone. Somehow it, it didn't affect my, I still gave the book five stars. So the miserableness of <laughs> trying to read it at the beginning didn't impact my overall impression of the book. Next up is So You Want to Talk About Race. This is another one that I think is really, really good as a read, kind of to get an understanding of race issues. And I think the author is brilliant and I think the way that she writes is really, really accessible. And it feels like you're just having a conversation with her rather than once again, you know, having a bunch of facts spit out at you. Uh, she does a great job of weaving in anecdotes both her own and others into the entire book and then tying it into these broader issues and I think that it's a really another illuminating read. And finally Not That Bad by Roxane Gay which is a collection of uh, essays and pieces about uh, rape culture and it is definitely a very heavy read uh but gets at some very very uh present issues in our world i really like uh compilation books like this that are you know a bunch of essays written by individuals uh around a similar topic i think it's nice to kind of have all of these different individual bite-sized chunks and all of these totally different perspectives kind of coalescing around the same idea and I think that this book is really does a great job of it. And there we go, that was 10 fiction, 10 nonfiction. I didn't do that on purpose, it was almost entirely based on what came out of my uh, holds list first, so I don't actually pick the order to read things, I, I am governed entirely by my library card and my online book availability, so I didn't mean to have a perfect division, but I ended up with a perfect division. I somehow read 20 books <laughs> this semester. Don't ask me how, but that's what they were. And I pretty much recommend all of them in varying degrees. But that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope maybe you found a new book that you want to add to your to read list. They are all linked down below if you want to grab one for yourself. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more from me, you can hit that subscribe button down below. Also the bell icon too, so that you get notified every time that I post a new video, which is twice a week. And I will see you soon for another new video. Bye.